That was a wild night. It's like I got... I, the, the alcohol fucks me up. I Like on two shots, I'll tell you what. If I don't eat anything, because I, sometimes I just don't eat very much. Holy shit, I almost got sick and vomited just from two shots. Um, God, that was a... I got a headache. I'm like hungover. Okay, get going. It's like, I mean, it is the weekend. I am working tomorrow. I don't really have that much to do today. All I have to do is get everything packed up and organized for my paint job. I'm excited. I think I got silver too for the trim. So I'm going to do silver on the trim. I was, I was looking at some classic vehicles driving by. I'm going to stick to the, the body sections as well. Um, and definitely, thank God, I found out that someone didn't hit my car, and it was my ladder that caused that on the door. So now once I get it painted and sort of, you know, a little bit smoothed out, I won't return the ladder as what as it was because it is just going to crack the paint and um, further damage the door. So that is really good. Um, it's always... You know, I didn't think it was someone who crashed my car originally. Someone said that when I was looking at it and I found it. His name's Daryl. He's like, oh, look, yeah, it looks like it's a bumper. And then, but it's, if I was just by myself, I would have assumed that it was, that didn't happen. Um, it's almost always more efficient to begin with self-accountability and self-responsibility when there's something that has gone wrong. Because then you have power. <laughs> if you don't immediately start from that starting point, then you're going to reattach a ladder and you're going to fuck up your new paint job. <laughs> so it's always a good idea. Don't let anyone suggest otherwise to you ever. Uh, you know, it never hurts to start from that starting point. What did I do? <laughs> Trust me. Two shots deep foot dancing we got Mitchell I grew up with this guy Mitchell and I'm at the hotel um having my coffee and um Mitchell's on my feed he's like it's like teacher quit students too addicted to phone so I called him I grew up with that guy for like when I left in high school my I could not live with my mom I just like left I just got in my car I was like no <laughs> no no nope no nope. I highly suggest you do that if you're a kid and you have a car and your parent's not like a horrible parent, but it just ain't working, go live with someone else. Just, you need to leave that environment. If you hate your fucking situation, your home life that much while you're, and you're able to drive, just be like, I love you mom or dad, or I love you mom and dad, or maybe there's no one there. Just get in your car and just go live with friends. Trust me. Trust me. It will be something good. So I called Mitchell. You can call him later on in life and be like, what the heck? I didn't even recognize your voice on your voicemail. I ran into him and his new wife. Um, yes, you should run away from fucking home like two blocks away to the neighbor's house and live there. Trust me. Things will, it'll your parents will age less because if you're that upset in your home I mean don't go like run out to like a river and go swimming in a river like they, you don't watch a fat lady swing on a rope from a bridge while you're driving you're gonna crash because you're like whoa but get your ass out and go you know you better get fucking good grades I guess that's what society cares about or you better start making money Better start saving up and getting more assets. Better change the oil on your car. Better not rev the engine. Better not text and drive. But get the fuck up out of there because it's not healthy. You gotta leave when things are like healthy or not are unhealthy and destructive, and so that you're not stuck in like an environment that's like killing you. Um, so Mitchell left teaching because the students are too addicted to their phones. 
Um, don't make up an excuse either. If you just want to quit, just quit. 